Yeah, backslid and singers. <laughs> yeah, hello. Boy, ain't she glad to be saved tonight? Amen. Oh. Uh, yeah, we've been reading and praying a little bit, and and uh, one verse, one word in all of this is really what the Lord has got our attention with tonight. But we're going to read the first two verses of Romans chapter 12. And if you'll pray just right, we'll say what the Lord wants us to say and let you go home. Uh, we know that uh, chapters uh, 10 and 11. Uh, in Romans are all about salvation, all about believing, all about uh, repentance. And then Paul says in the first verse of chapter 12, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Lord, we thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, Lord, for each one that made their way out, inside and out. Lord, we thank you tonight for the good singing. We thank you, Lord, for the word. God, we pray tonight you'd touch these old lips and enlighten our heart. Lord, in that that you would have said tonight, you know who's here, you know what I need, and maybe it's for me, Lord, I, I, instead of anybody else. But, Lord, thy will be done. Help us tonight. Hide us in you. Bless your word and help your servant, sweet Jesus, and we'll praise you for what you do. Jesus, wonderful name we ask. Amen. Now, uh, the, every, every uh, we probably won't go no further than just verse 1 tonight, but uh, every... Word basically in this first verse, Paul is. Uh, I mean, I, I tried to find a good meaning and beseech. He said, I beseech. Now, uh, the best one I can find is simply begging. Paul said, I am begging you. And who's he talking to? He said, Brethren. He's not talking tonight to the lost. He's talking to the brethren. He's talking to those that uh, have the profession and the uh, the possession and profession both of, of Jesus Christ. And he said, I'm begging of you. I, I mean, uh, please, therefore, because of what the Lord has done in chapters 10 and 11, brethren, brethren, that's for us by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living. Well, I tell you what tonight, church. You know, you hear people I, I talk about. I die for you. I die. For, there's even a song or two that I've heard uh, that that willing to die. Well, I'm glad tonight that the Lord don't want us to die. He wants us to live. He, I mean, many, many places in the Scripture, the Lord talks about uh, what He done was so that you and I not only now could live, but have everlasting life, but have joy unspeakable, have peace that passes all understanding, have comfort that... No, honey, the Lord wants you and me to be so comforted in the plan and the, uh, the place of salvation that we just want to talk about. Paul said in Corinthians uh, something to the effect that he wasn't uh, uh, didn't, didn't want to know, talk about nothing except Jesus Christ. I mean, this is what this was Paul's life. He realized what he was at on the Damascus Road. He realized what he was doing. He was brought under conviction, and he repented and and he, and accepted Christ. And therefore begin to live. You can't say, well, you know, I didn't see no light like Paul did. I didn't either. But I seen the light, Jesus. <laughs> and I seen, I seen Jesus. Uh, when I saw myself a sinner, I saw myself, I saw Jesus. And therefore, this, I mean, boy, just get, <laughs> just get absorbed in the Lord. 
get absorbed uh, in the Spirit of the Lord. Allow the Lord to move into our heart. Allow the Lord uh, to show us the way. He said, I want you to be a living. I don't want you to be a sacrifice. He said, I want you to be a living sacrifice. In other words, I want you to show everybody around what happened. I, I, there are a few folks that I've talked to in the last little bit. I've tried to uh, stress the fact that, and I've even come across it here, I believe, a few times, that it's not my place to pass judgment. I don't know. I mean, I know we have uh, uh, the Word of God that says to judge a tree by the fruit it bears. But now, if you go over and read that, he does not say for me to judge a tree and if I don't see no fruit on it, it's my place to cut it down. He didn't say that. When I see a Christian or an individual, I mean, you can watch their life and kind of make a determination, but either way you look at them, they need prayer. Miss Genevieve was having a bad day Sunday. The only thing she needed was prayer. She didn't need us. Uh, uh, well, I mean, all she needed, just like me. Many times, we need prayer. Paul said to pre present, in other words, to give myself. Now, I've had several jobs in my life. Uh, some good and some bad. They some of them that I just, uh, I didn't really want to go to work. Now, the question might arise, did I do the best quality of work while I was there? Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, when I was thinking of this, I was thinking of, really I was thinking of Homer. But Randy, uh, he followed along and even Tim and built some houses. Now I'm going to tell you something. You, you, you've got two or three kinds of houses. You've got some in these here uh, resorts and these uh, golf clubs and these gated communities. And uh, they're not much more than put together uh, with glue and a piece of tape or hay baling wire. I mean, honey, they I've seen them. I know I've, I've seen them being built. They're not built with the best quality. They're not built with the best standards. God doesn't want my uh, uh, less of sacrifice. He wants me to be a living he wants me to be so filled with the Spirit of God that I get excited and I want to tell somebody how Jesus is done. I don't have to tell them where they're at. I don't have to tell them where they're saved or lost. I don't have to tell them what they need. I just need to tell what Jesus has done, the difference that Jesus has made in my life. God help me. God, he said, I beseech you, I'm begging to you, brethren, present your bodies a living. Now, when, when he talked about bodies, brother, that's everything. That's body, soul, and spirit. We are to put everything. Have you ever listened? Well, I know you have. I know you have. Uh, I, I, I've seen people, I've seen people, and I've seen some on YouTube lately. And you can tell when a person is singing because they love the Lord. And you can tell, you can probably tell when a preacher is preaching and he's just preaching to get by. What you do for God has to begin here. It has to begin in your heart. You have to do what you're doing. Tonight, oh Jesus, I don't never want to make nobody mad. I don't. But if it comes from the Word of God and sent out by the Spirit of God, don't get mad at me. Just talk to Him. We need to present. I need to present. I, I mean, this is, a, this is a privilege. This is not a, 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 a something that a multiple choice. This is a privilege to present myself uh, my body to him, a living sacrifice. Now, why? What, what, what about that living sacrifice, uh, which is my reasonable service? He wants us to fellowship. 
You know, he created us in the beginning so that we could fellowship and praise him. He wants us to fellowship. He wa- you know what I you know what I get when I when I have a you know what I get when I have a regular a regular walk with the Lord? I get if I get out of line, if I do something or I say something that's wrong, I get the Holy Spirit of God guiding me back in to place. When I walk with Him from the heart, brother, only thing I can see with people, I don't see their sin, I don't see their mistake. I see they do they need do they need Jesus? Do they need prayer? I want to love them. Now listen, I'm not getting like, uh, well, some TV preachers. Uh, You know, we was discussing this the other day. Someone made a remark about Joel Osteen. Now I try my best. Jehovah Witness is about the only one that I will literally just tell you to stay away from. Uh, They just just go too many directions wrong. And I know Joel Osteen. I've seen Joel Osteen. I've listened to Joel Osteen. And he talks a lot about love, 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 love. And he has got uh, millions of followers. Uh, his dad was a preacher, and he was not that bad a preacher. Now, Joel may have went a little different than I do now, but his theory is, is that God's love will guide us to fellowship. God's love in our heart will cause us to follow him his love in our heart will cause us to forsake others, or f- forsake sin. So, you know, wh- what is God? God is love. Now, God's love, and, and the Lord doesn't uh, condone or go along with sin. Always goes against, if it's sin in, in this book, it's still sin today. But church, listen tonight. I've tried my best to think and pray of the best. You know, sometimes, sometimes you take a seven day week and, and the best day that you have is Wednesday evening and the best day that you have is Sunday. Reckon why that is? Because you're mindful of Jesus. You're mindful of the house of God. You go into church and sit down. This is supposed to be a place of refuge a place of comfort, a place where you can hear the Word of God. If you hear something about hell, chances are they somebody in the midst, if the preacher's doing his job, following God, praying and searching, they may be somebody there that's lost. But he's still trying to show them the love of God. God's love. He said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, your everything, your heart, your soul, your mind, you you present it to Jesus that He can use it today, that He can help somebody along the way. Fellowship with Him. Talk to Him. Separate from sin. Listen, and I mean, walk with the Lord uh, like he tells us to. Follow him close. Living. Living. I don't, uh, I don't uh, uh, cherish dead things. I mean, you know, unless it's hamburger or something like that. Uh, I don't cherish, I mean, I like, I like life. I like to be around people that are alive. My, my little old girl, Lynn Ann, bless its heart, uh, when it comes in, and I've said this before, when it comes in on Monday night and she feels pretty good, you can tell it's going to be a good night. When she comes in, like she did Monday night, and she felt bad, and she's still sick at home, didn't even go to church tonight. And I mean, and I said, well, honey, no. <laughs> going home. That ain't rude. But when we are walking in the Spirit, what we say is not going to hurt nobody. If our lips is guarded and guided by the Spirit of the Lord, they're not going to confuse. They're not going to hurt nobody. They're going to be of help. 
Paul said, I beseech you, I'm begging that you be, present yourself. Lord, here I am. Look what he done for you. Look what he done for me. He paid my sin debt. He hung on the cross and paid my sin debt and gave me life. As I said a while ago, He gave me life. He gave me everlasting life. He gave me joy I fulfilled in Him. He gave me peace that passes all understanding. He gives us comfort. He gives us guidance when we need leadership. Boy, I'm telling you now, if you study all the things and study and study and study and get them in your heart that the Lord does for you, it will make you stay close. You remember that guy over in, um, where is it, Mark or Luke? Maybe Mark, chapter 5, maybe. The crazy man. The crazy man that was possessed. The Lord went where he was. And he said, what, have I ha what do I have to do with thee, thou most high God? You see, he was possessed with demons. And they recognized the Lord. They recognized, and boy, they got nervous. And the Lord took them out of that man, put them in that herd of swine. And what did they do? They run off a cliff into water and drowned themselves. How many people today are walking around with the same things leading their path that a bunch of hogs would rather die to follow? But she go right on down there. And that man was found where Jesus was. He said, Lord, I, I want to be with you. I want to stay where, honey, that's the way it is. One time you fall in love. I am so thrilled. I don't care who knows it. Give a flip. Nobody's business but mine to start with. But I want to spend every moment of every day with Denise. I don't want, I, I, there's been two or three times that I needed to get up and, and, and run up to town for something. I just wait on her to get up. I don't want to be away from her. I love her. I love her. She, she, she means everything to me. But you know what? I love the Lord even more. And Randy, I want to be close to the Lord. I, I, honey, I, my desire has always been in my heart, Lord, help me to be like Moses when he come down from the mountain. That's what I'd like to be. I'd like for folks, not necessarily or just in the church, but out there. I'd like for them to see that I love Jesus. They ain't going to see, they ain't going to see perfect. He's still in the flesh. But I want them to see Jesus. I want them to see that I have presented myself to Him a living sacrifice and I'm depending and trusting on Him to fill me up, to guide me, to, uh, to uh, let me fellowship with Him. Let me talk to Him. Uh, let me praise Him. Uh, let me read and study His Word uh, and see what the will of God is. Hmm. Hallelujah. Present yourselves a living Sacrifice. Holy. Now, that'll obscure sometimes. Holy. Now, we all know that somewhere in Peter, he said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Now, we all know tonight, and the thing about it is you can't let it discourage you. We all know that we're never going to attain what one of the uh, apostles or disciples did, let alone where the Lord's at. We ought to have that desire. We ought to have that desire to get close to Him, to walk with Him, that folks around us could see without carrying a sign on our back, I'm a Christian. They ought to see it. I'm going to tell you something. I don't know how you feel about it. I don't know how much you use it. and It's your business too. But I get so frustrated that Denise has got some family. And I get so frustrated. They'll put something on there. Went to church today. Had a good time. And just recently, their, uh, her son turned 16. Oh, did he really? 21. Whew, I'm behind. He turned 21. You know what she put on there? I took my boy and got his first drink today. Now, I don't know about Baltimore, Maryland, 
But I just know about me. I'm going to tell you something. Somebody that, that goes to church, oh, I had such a good time. Boy, that was for me. And then put something like that on there. I'd be like a dog. I'd cock my leg on that, wouldn't you? I mean, come on, folk. Those sinner people around here. Bill Ray, you know what? Jim V. You know it as well as I do. Old sinner people in, around in this community, they knew somebody that was a Christian. They knew their life. And brother, if they didn't go to church, when tragedy struck their home, what did they do? They called somebody in the church and said, we need prayer. They knew they couldn't in all honesty because they was out of church. But they knew, well, I'm telling you, that's a blessing. When somebody asks you to pray for them, Church tonight, we ought to make it a, a promise to God to help us that we'd pray for them. We're not going to live holy. But he said to strive. Strive to be holy. Strive to be separated. Acceptable unto God. You see, I ain't read nowhere in there. I love Tim Robinson. But I ain't never read nowhere in there and Tim, Tim's vice versa. I ain't never read nowhere in there where I'm supposed to walk and talk and live to please you. Now you me. What is it? Oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all these verses, but I pray that you just hit me. When a man, something to the effect, when a man pleases God, he even makes his enemies to be at peace with him. That's in the Scriptures. I'm not sure exactly where. But that's in the Scriptures. If I please God, oh, they may find... Nowadays, it's hard to do anything because there ain't much Scripture left. There's too many of them got a comic book instead of the Word of God. Let's read that one more time. We'll finish up. I beseech ye, therefore, because of what happened, I'm begging to you, brethren, by the mercies of God. Boy, what mercies. God allowed His Son to go, that you present your bodies as everything tonight, your heart, your mind, your soul. You see, I, I meant to finish just a while ago. I've had jobs that, that I, didn't, I didn't do my best on. I mean, when I stayed at Avondale eight hours and asked me to work over and I worked eight more, I, I didn't do my best. I, I didn't. I, I, I just didn't. But when I went to the school, and I loved it, I, my hours are seven to three, and I was there eight and ten and eleven hours every day. Why? Because I loved it. I wanted to get my work done so I could spend time watching those little fellas. Watching those little fellas, you know. At Christmas time, I tell you, at Christmas time we got a tree that, that uh, was uh, remote control, lights on it. Yeah. And I took that remote control and the teachers would come down the hall with a kindergarten class or something. And I'd put the remote in my pocket. Oh, I guess it was this side. I'd put it in this pocket. And I'd hold it up and I'd hit that remote. And I'd... They thought it was my fingers turning it on and off. My thumbs. Huh. Hey, their parents would come in that evening and they'd say, there's Mr. Roger. He's got magical thumbs. He turns that Christmas tree on and off. I wanted to spend time because I loved them. Because I liked what I was doing. You know, when you, hey, coming to church, coming to church is not a burden. Coming to church is not a, I mean, Lord sakes, it, it ought to be a joy to us. It ought to be a joy to us. The fellowship, the sin, there's plenty of times when a doll, he sung one a couple of weeks ago, and I'm telling you, that just stuck in my old heart. Kneel at the cross. Now, I mean, I just sung, Renee, uh, uh, Miss Genevieve, uh, uh, Maxine, they'll sing a song. And it'll just stick with me. God will give you something to help you and encourage you every service that you go to if you want it. I believe it. I believe you will. I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable, reasonable. 
That's not, that's not out of reason. That's reasonable. Praise his name. Now, when I look back, don't you? I mean, when you look at the old rugged cross, and you see from the Garden of Gethsemane uh, the trip that he took all the way down and laid down on the cross, and they drove the spikes in his hands and his feet, the crown of thorns on his head, they pierced his side, they beat him, they brought him naked to shame. And he looked down and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. When I think of what he done for me, and you see while he's on the cross, that old veil was torn from top to the bottom. That gave me access to the throne of God. And when he died, he sent the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, into my heart. And I had a Holy Spirit when I accepted and believed him. That Holy Spirit helped me, helped me to, to obtain these verses and hold on to them in my heart. And there's one place in there in John or somewhere, he says he'll bring those to your remembrance. He'll bring the Word to your remembrance. When you need it, he'll be there. I've had, I've had several folks down through the years to say, well, I can read, but I just can't remember. I can't either. I can't either. But I have the Spirit of the Lord. When I need, He's there. He's there. He'll bring them back. Do you think I could stand up here as dumb as I am before you and, 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 and go into all these scriptures and this joy and this excitement and this zeal by myself? No. But it's who lives in my heart. Jesus. He's in yours. Just let him shine. Let him shine. Let him shine. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, for these few words. Thank you for each one that made their way out inside now. Lord, we thank you for the love of God, the love of Christ. We thank you, Lord, that they're shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for every word that we do understand. We praise you, Lord, that we have an opportunity to yield ourselves to you to be that vessel that's meant for the Master's use. We believe, Lord, that time's running out. Help us, Lord, step up and take every advantage and step into every door that you give us with the good news that Jesus loves you. Help us, Father, I pray. Thank you again for each one here. Go with us. Watch over us. Be in all the prayer requests. Lord, be with this family up the road. Lord, that lost a loved one. Lord, Brother Jerry's family. Lord, for his son Stanley. Lord, just, I pray that you just comfort and touch him. Help him. Lord, go with us now in all of our prayer requests. We'll praise you for what you do. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Anyone have anything? Remember Sunday morning?